Caddis Maximus here. New Britain, kind of like East Co Tools or Western Forge. Uh, it's a shame that they're not around anymore because they were very successful and it's kind of surprising that they just weren't able to stay around because they manufactured a lot of rebranded tools. We're talking Blackhawks and Max and Pennons and Huskies and just the list goes on. I always forget how many brands there are. All using what's known as the Kilness Roundhead Ratchet Mechanism, which is probably one of the best uh, ever made. Probably, I wouldn't say the best ever made, but one of the best. It's an amazing, very reliable, very robust uh, mechanism for round head ratchets that gives you pretty fine action. And one of the reasons the Kilness design works so well, turns out that Kilness, who when he made, patented that ratchet design or mechanism design, uh, what I didn't know is that he was a graduate of MIT. So it was actually a MIT engineered ratchet mechanism. But besides all the brands that New Britain, and then here's an actual New Britain branded one. It's actually pretty hard to find genuine New Britain branded New Britain ratchets, but you can find a million of uh, <laughs> their rebrands. But one of the odd things about New Britain is they've had these series of ratchets. This is a New Britain. And how you really know a New Britain ratchet is by the reverse knob because it's always surprisingly stiff. It isn't like an SK or so many others. You actually have to put a fair amount of force to get it to reverse. And it's always just a really solid, just really uh, definitive uh, action on them. And this one was the same thing. This just says Maine, USA, 3902. The only thing that gives it away, that's a New Britain, is this 2981389. And if we look at the genuine New Britain, 2981389. So it's a New Britain ratchet that's just a 3902, Maine, USA. No other markings on this ratchet. Kind of like this one. It just says USA on it. Absolutely nothing else. But it's a New Britain built ratchet. And it's just so super odd. So that's why I'm documenting this. Because if you ever run into an oddball ratchet like this. The 30, we'll just call this the 3902 3.8 ratchet. Of course it would have brothers. Probably the 3901 quarter inch and the 3903 half inch. They're actually worth picking up. Now, one of the Achilles heel, here's the deal. We can see that this has, this has some of the worst anvil slop I've seen of any roundhead ratchet. And that's actually one of the things a lot of the new Britain ratchets have. Just terrible anvil slop due to the nature of the floating pawl design that it has. It's not a rocking pawl that kind of rocks back and forth on a pin like an SK design. The pawl is actually floating kind of like a lot of modern pair heads, just adapted or in this case, inside a round head. So you can have terribly off canter anvil, but the pawl itself will self-align to be flat with the teeth that it's engaging. It's this one, the deal with New Britain uh, type ratchets is the fact that a lot of them are very loose and you have to try to put in snap rings or find special washers to put in there to try to shim that up. But due to the nature of the design, kind of, uh, you know, a lot of my subscribers are aware that there can be designs where things have loose fits, but be very tremendously reliable. That being said, it seems that the tolerances were more loosey-goosey on all the rebranded ones. And we can see some other differences. We can see the heads. It's a little bit more bulbous. This ridge here is a remnant of the forging flashing. Where, like, on the nicer ones, it's really ground smooth and more narrow. I will say that on the new Britain branded ones, the anvils are always really tight. So it seems that they were just part of making them a little cheaper on the rebrands was a little bit lower tolerances. When it comes to the machine work, the head, internals of the heads are always real consistent. It's just the machine work inside the ratchet head itself. Or the ratchet body. We'll pop out this snap ring. Try not to shoot my eye out. Now this one does have an issue where ratchets just fine in reverse. 
but it doesn't want to go into the forward direction. And we can see why here. There's our New Britain Kilness. You can always tell by the stiffness. This thing just has a bunch of old grease in it. But that's how this thing works. It actually, wow, this one is really dirty. Nothing's just some lube and a little bit of wire brushing can't clean up. But how it works is we have a, I mean, it's a complicated design because you have this plate, you have a e-ring that holds it in. This is an over-centering spring. So when you push this this way, it's supposed to make the ratchet paw move to the opposite direction. And that's usually what causes the issues with these. It's just a simple fact that it just needs to be lubed up. And then, of course, the ratchet paw itself is just a com completely sp spring-loaded item in there. And so when you it's in a particular direction, as you are turning it, what ends up happening is that it forms a wedge where it pushes it out against the body of the ratchet. You can also see why it's really reliable. It's like on this one, which is a coarse tooth, uh, it looks like we have nine teeth. So it just has a ton of teeth, you know, a pretty wide area, maybe 30 degrees of the actual circle, has teeth engaged. With ratchets, just use a light machine oil. Using grease, it just ends up being too heavy, holds too much grit. Actually, for the longest time, I've been using this Prolong, you know, it's penetrating lubricant, but it's just been my go-to. It's really been, I've had this can for like years or something like that. Looking at the bottom of the can, we can see VOC 50, there we go, VOC 50%. So half of what's in there apparently is volatile organic compounds, probably why it works so well. So this issue, and this is actually, I think I've run into this once before where it just, if you give it a little nudge, it'll reverse, but for some reason something gets messed up to where it doesn't quite want to reverse without a, like a little assist. It'll go one way just fine, but not the other. And what I found, is when it wants to jam up like that is it's a little bit of butchery but you either shave off a little bit of this the corner of this top plate or you knock down this corner a little bit or a little bit of both just giving it a little bit more extension to sweep the other direction and that always seems to fix the issue I guess I haven't done a proper full tear down on one of these in a long time Anyway, here's our over-centering spring. It's just a little spring. It's a loop. And it just sits down this hole in the top of the head. I'll clean this up a little bit here. And all that is, is just gets pushed together so it makes sure that what it does is the idea is that when this plate goes one way, it forces this one to go the opposite direction. And these are just sliding on top of each other. And this little spring is what's performing that action or that activity. This thing was super dirty. Then in here, we have a separate spring, which is just that spring right there. Presses on the, just the back of the paw. Otherwise, this paw really is just floating in there and it is simply generally kept in place because of this little hook system here so it can't really pop out but the whole paw can actually rock back and forth and twist all around and it's one of the kind of uh, geniuses of this design and why it works so well except for this kind of rare situation where it doesn't want to quite reverse, so all I'm going to do is just grab this with some pliers and knock off a bit of that corner just so this can rotate over a little further. So I'm going to tile this a review and repair, and you can see how I just knocked a little bit of that corner off, so let's get this all back together. And to tell you the truth, <laughs> I forgot at the beginning of the video, but now that I remembered, because initially I was filing on this corner, which is not something I should have done, but not a big deal. Just pulling this off and knocking just a little chamfer 
Uh, it, it just is like a tolerance thing where on some of these new Britons, it just it doesn't quite get far enough to cause this over-centering spring to really want to do its thing. But knocking off the little corner, and I even knocked off a little bit on the other side, uh, doing that fixes it every time. I mean, this thing now, look at that. Absolutely no issue reversing. It's not even hesitating, not even pretending like it wants to get stuck. Just absolutely perfect action. Really like that about these new Britons. It's a really solid reversing action there. Anyway, so that deals with that. Cleaned out the ratchet head, so whoop. Let's actually get the reverse lever on there. This is it was amazing how dirty a little 3 8 ratchet can be. So now, what I have is to try to deal with, I have a bunch of dirty rags, is the only way I've been able to deal with all the massive backlash that ends up inside these ratchets, I don't know where, is sometimes you can use a snap ring because the snap ring and it's a little bit of extra thickness but really you got to try to find the mag a magical washer that's just the right size and it really depends usually you can go by a hardware store and find something like a shim washer or something like that or they will have shim washers not just standard washers but very thin ones that you can end up finding that are just the right size to be able to fit inside here and around the anvil. I'm gonna have to find some more old cordless drills to take apart. That's why I've been finding all these thin washers. Found one that was uh, just a little bit too thick, so I've been just put a piece of sandpaper on glass and been sanding it down to try to get it to cooperate here. And I'm getting pretty darn close. And that's all there is to it. It's something that they you know, it's just, it's one of the things that always has puzzled me about these New Britons is exactly this, the really oddball tolerances. Well, even after spending some time trying to sand down, that's a really hard washer and very difficult when it's super thin to try to sand it down. So this is always a challenge of fixing ratchets. Here's the original snap ring. 51 thousandths is actually a me pretty thick and meaty snap ring. Digging through my snap ring collection, found one that was 42 thousandths. And the original style spiral spring, or spiral retaining ring, 38 thousandths. So even if I have a washer that's really too thick, now I have a selection of replacement retaining rings to get it working properly. And for the people who ask, the easiest thing to really do is just buy a snap ring master set. They're not very expensive, and that way you'll have a whole collection of them. So anyway, I always enjoy doing that. It's Even though it is an effort to have had to sand down that washer that I was able to find that was the right size, you know, the wisdom of buying... I mean, I bought a master set, and then I've bought, like, you know, there are variety packs of, like, Napa snap rings, so I bought a couple of those. And how many times having that set has saved me? I mean, it's just been amazing. Just having just the right size and the right thickness. So in that case, finding a snap ring that was 10,000 thinner, really like doing that, because now we saw at the beginning of the video... This anvil was all over the place. Now, it's tolerable. There's always a little bit of play in a round head. But this one, now, is just more than tolerable. Pretty darn tight. And as we can see, it turns nice and smoothly. And this little issue of not wanting to reverse. We can hear that click. Works absolutely every time now. And it's just kind of fun to take something like this and bring it back to life. And what is yet another New Britain made ratchet, the 3902, that I did not have in my collection of 
New Britain rebranded ratchets. Really like them. And even with some of the faults, which I have learned, and I have to admit, like excessive anvil play that you have to spend time collecting, finding right washers and snap rings to shim up. As well as, and it's really rare, that reversing issue I think is only second time. And I probably have 20 or 30 ratchets that have been built by New Britain. And that's like only the second time I've run into one where it actually had an issue with reversing. But just doing a little shaving on that top, the corner of that top uh, reversing plate always fixes the issue. Every single time. And once you get it shimmed up, then you just have something that runs nice and square. And to tell you the truth, running a lot of pair heads. Heck, I'm about to do it an old Napa. That has a fair amount of play. I have an old school Walden quarter inch I decided to do a video on. I mean, and this anvil is just all over the place. So something, so the position I've gotten this in now is just totally awesome. And is a great valuable or uh, viable ratchet. And for a lot of people, a ratchet like this with just a few squirts of lube every once in a while would end up Probably lasting him a lifetime or near a lifetime, to tell you the truth. Anyway, sorry for my long kind of podcast reviewish rebuild videos, but every once in a while I just like chatting with y'all. Anyway, thanks for watching.